Uh, hi everyone, thank you for coming to the talk. And uh, I'm Nai Hui Cha from Quicks at the University of Maryland. Today I'm going to talk about classical verification of quantum computations with efficient verify. And this is a joint work with Kaimin Zhong from Academic Sinica and uh, Takashi Yamakawa from NTT Secure Platform Laboratories. Uh, in the near future, we believe that quantum computers are very likely to be unportable. Unport we won't have a quantum iPhone, laptop, or PC soon. And this is because that uh, for quantum computers, we need a very large space to keep it. To, to keep it. And we also need to, to have a very stable environment to make sure that the qubits are uncoherent. So we cannot have it to be with us uh, everywhere. Now the question is that, suppose we, I have a local device which has no quantum power, then how do we do a quantum task by using our local device? For example, uh, if I am given a quantum circuit C uh, in, a, in a classical way, like you have the classical description of how to uh, arrange the gates and uh, input X, how do you compute C of X from your local device? Okay, and the answer is very easy. You just ask quantum computers for help. Like IBM have a quantum cloud platform and you can, uh, you can design your circuit C and then your input X and then you send your C and X to the platform. And then the IBM quantum computers will compute the uh, answers for you. Like the answer could be Z equal to C of X. Okay, yeah, so this seems very good and that we don't need a quantum resource in our iPhone or laptop. However, can, how, can you, how can you verify that the answer Z is equal to C of X? For example, um, if the server is not a honest server, it's some cheating server, it, it just gives you some arbitrary answers to your question. Then how can you verify that uh, the answer you get is correct, not the arbitrary wrong answer? So this is a big question, and people try to address this question. So the question, I refer to the question again, can the verifier, uh, can the client verify that Z equal to C of X? And uh, to answer this question, we also want it to satisfy three requirements. First, we want the verifier has no quantum power, because as I said, uh, in the near term, our local device cannot have quantum power. Okay, and second, we also want the prover to be efficient. It means that it doesn't need to spend much more time than computing C of X. Also, we want the verifier to be efficient. Okay, so then the first approach is that, suppose I just want to compute some circuit C, which is uh, in BQP, then because BQP is in P-space, equal to IP interactive proof. So for ver there, there exists an IP protocol to help you verify, uh, verify the ends of C of X. Okay, this sounds good. But now that in the IP protocol, we always, uh, the prover in the IP protocol is an all powerful prover. So the prover in this protocol may not be efficient. So this doesn't satisfy the second, uh, the second requirement we want, that the we want the prover to be efficient. But in IP protocol, the prover may not. So there are a line, there, there are many researchers try to answer this question. The first attempt in this kind of, in this kind of research, by uh, uh, a hard one of at all, they, try, they show that if your local device have certain quantum resources, which may not be a all powerful quantum computer, but it just be uh, some ability to generate quantum states or operating some quantum gates, then uh, you can have a, if it, you can have an interpret you can verify the answers with an efficient verify. Okay, and uh, another of research is considered the multi proof case. Uh, but, uh, this is by Rek uh, Rekaido and a bunch of following works. They show that if the two proof, if you can have two proofers and these two proofers share some EPR pairs and uh, they cannot communicate with each other, then yes, you can have an interactive proof uh, with these two proofers. Okay. 
oh, but I want to mention that. However, all of this, uh, all of this, uh, this approaches either need some content resources in the local device, or you need more than one proofers, and these proofers cannot be cannot cheat by communication. And in 2018, by my head of seminar work about CBQC protocol, she showed that there is a full message CBQC protocol for decision problem. It means that we just try to prove X is in a BQP language L or not, based on Quentin LW assumption. So Quentin LW assumption simply means that the learning with error problem is hard for Quentin computation. And she showed that the soundness error of her protocol is just one half plus navigable, and the completeness error is just navigable. And the, ver the runtime of verifier and the prover is only polynomial in T for T, the time for computing in language L. Okay, so this looks very good because the verifier doesn't need quantum power check, and the prover is efficient, it only runs in time polynomial in T check. However, the verifier here is not that efficient because the verifier need to run in time polynomial in T. And like in the classical setting, when we do the delegation, we always want the verifier only running in time for the logarithm in T. It means that, okay, the verifier itself doesn't need to do much computation. It just need to like uh, do very, very, uh, very, very small computation to compute what he wants. So in this, in this world, we try to show that a CBQC protocol is an efficient verifier. And to achieve this, we prove that first, parallel petition of my head protocol with navigable soundness error. And then we show that there is a two one CBQC protocol in the quantum random oracle model obtained by Fiat Shamir transform to the parallel petition version of the my head protocol. And here, the quantum Fiat Shamir transform is by Liu and the Gem and the Dong et al. in 2019. And uh, finally, we, we have a two raw CBQC protocol with polylog and verifier in the common reference stream model. So let's do it again. We start from the four mesh protocol with constant soundness, and this is Mahadev's protocol. And then we do a parallel repetition. Uh, which gives us a full message protocol with navigable soundness. And then we do a quantum Fiat Shamir transform, which gives us a two message protocol with navigable soundness. And finally, we consider a common reference stream model and, with, and get a protocol with navigable soundness and polylog and verify. Okay. And because of a time constraint, uh, we cannot go to all the details. So in this talk, I will focus on the first part, which is a parallel, parallel application of my head protocol with navigable standardness error. Okay, and this has been independently proved by Alerjek et al. in 2020 with a different proof. And uh, their work has also been accepted by TCC 2020. So if you are interested in their work, you can go to check their video. They do have some extended results uh, they do have some results extended from this parallel rotation, which is different from our uh, scope. Okay, so before we go to the technic uh, technical details, we first briefly review my head of CVQC protocol. So in, in her protocol, the client first generate a secret key and public key, and then send the public key to the prover. Okay, here is the public key. And then, the, after receiving the public key, the prover generates a commitment Y and an internal state Psi. And then he sends Y to the verifier. And after receiving Y, uh, the client uh, generates a bit, which is C is zero or one. For, one. for zero, it means that you will do a test run protocol. So here we don't we don't uh, I will not specify cash run and hadama run, but you just remember that for zero it do some do a challenge and for one it do another challenge. Okay. And then after receiving the challenge, challenge bit, the prover just sent back a message A. And then the client just decide to accept or reject uh, based on all the messages he got. Okay. 
And there is a lemma implicit in Mahadev's paper, which is that for any X in L, if a quantum polynomial time treating prover passes the test run with probability one minus the predictable, it means that then it passes the Hadama run with probability the predictable, assuming the quantum hardness of W assumption. So this implies that we can actually divide the prover space into S0 and S1 for sign. It means that after he, after approval sending a stick message, then we can divide the, his internal subspace, internal space into two subspace, S0 and S1, such that S0 is that is all the state which are set with high probability in the test run. Okay. And by this, by this lemma, it implies that S will also be rejected with high probability in the Hadama run. And for S1, as well as all the states that reject with high probability in the test run. Okay, then it seems that, okay, now you are given a state S in SB, S will be either rejecting Hadama run or test run with high probability, right? Uh, this, this is simply, this simply follow from the previous uh, statement. Because here, if S is in S0, then you reject with high probability in Hadama run. If S is in S1, it reject with high probability in the test run. Okay. Then by this lemma, we can have this decomposition. And then uh, it is trivial that if we cho just choose C from 0, 1 uniformly randomly, then we accept with probability 1 half plus negligible n. Okay. Now we can try to parallel repetition, try to do parallel repetition of my head depth protocol by just dividing a prover space. So the theory we want is that, suppose we do an n-fold repetition of Mahadev's DVQC protocol, then we can reduce the soundness error to two to the minus m plus negligible n, okay? And this just, and the problem is just that uh, the, the parents first generated uh, m different secret key and public key and sent all the m public keys to the prover uh, parallel. And then prover will send all the commitments in parallel, and then the and then the client send all the changes in parallel, and so on. Okay, and we can still divide the space into S0, S1 for different iteration, right? For example, for the for, for the iteration one, we can divide into S0, one and S1, one. For iteration two, we divide into S0, two and S1, two. And uh, we can also say, okay. For psi, which will be, if psi is in some uh, SBI, then it will be either rejected in the test room or rejected in the Hadama room. And now, we just consider ideal case, which is a very simple case. It is that the proof of stretch for IS iteration only depends on psi, okay? So it only depends on its uh, internal state psi, and it doesn't depend on the message he got, like the C1 to CM. Oh, this is not, this ideal case, of course, is not real, but we just, for simplicity, we just consider it, consider this case. Okay, then in this case, we actually, we can divide this psi into psi one to psi m plus uh, psi m pert. How do we do that? For psi, we can actually, we can divide it into psi one pert and psi one, which are corresponding to S, to staying S01 and staying S11. Okay, and based on which which change you are choosing this time, and then for S1, for set one perp, you can divide you can keep dividing it into side two perp and the side two, uh, using the S zero two and the S one two. You keep doing this, and you can get side m and the side m perp. And so here, side perp means that the state that passes change is C one to C i. Okay. And for psi i, it means that the state that passes changes c1 to ci minus one, but fails at ci, okay? And uh, of course, uh, it, is, it is trivial that the expected, the expected norm of psi m perp uh, is at the most two to the minus m. Oh, here, psi m perp is, um, uh, is the state that passes all the tests c1 to cm, okay? And then we are done. We come up with the parallel rotation theorem uh, in this ideal case, 
right? We just use S0 and the S1 and keep dividing the state into different subspaces. However, uh, the ideal case is not a real case because in the real case, P strategy can depend on C minus I, uh, which is as C1 to C M S1 and the C I plus one to C M, and which fails the analysis. Right. Because here, uh, when you want to compute the A1, when you want, when the proof want to compute AI, uh, it can depend on the previous and the and the it can depend on all the all the messages it got in the third message. Okay. So our our second idea is that okay, if we cannot if we cannot get rid of uh, C minus I, then we just include it into our calculation. So we just do an average over all C minus I. How do we do that? We still read, we still define SBI on um, the proof's internal state on average over C minus I. So we we define S zero I to be V accepts P S C in test one with probability gamma. Here gamma is just some one over poly probability. And the S one I is all the states that we reject in test one with probability smaller than smaller or equal to gamma. And then for for S zero I, for staying S zero I, we can actually amplify probability to one minus negligible by amplitude amplification. And uh, this technique is by uh, Merrill and Waltrus in 2005 and by uh, Nagaj et al. in 2009. Okay. And then, because we, can, we have amplified the probability to one minus negligible, then by the by Mahadab's lemma, we have that V accepts in test run with high probability in price B J Hadama run with high probability. So in press the S in S C or I, um, it will be accepted in Hadama run with negligible probability for O C. Okay. So yeah, then we got very good property for the first part. And for the second part, uh, for S1 I for any fixed C minus I, the property of acceptance is at most two to the M minus one uh, times gamma for O C. And you might think that uh, this may not be good enough because gamma is one over poly and the M it could be log N. So it's just a poly log, it just, it may be just a, a one over poly probability. However, this is good enough for our analysis because we just want to show that for all one over poly probability, if we choose gamma to be small enough, then we can uh, pass the test. Uh, the prover cannot pass the test with that uh, with that one over poly probability. Okay, and uh, this looks good. It seems that we are almost there, but uh, there is one more thing we need to prove, is that we actually need the projector of uh, S zero I and S one to be efficient. How do we need this? Is it is because that um, in the previous analysis we kept using this lemma, right? And this lemma actually requires the, the prover to be quantum to be a quantum polynomial tension improver. It means that all the states we consider in our analysis need to be uh, eff efficiently generated to have uh, this good property, good property that we are saying test wrong with high property in price, we are generated in Hadama wrong with high property. Okay, so we need a state to be efficient, then we need a projector to be efficient. So how to implement S0 i and S1 i? Uh, actually, we can observe that uh, the same property P corresponding to eigenvalue E i theta of certain efficient operator, okay? And the idea is that, okay, we just do the fast estimation. We compute P by fast estimation, and then we compare it with gamma, and then we uncompute P. Then uh, we can implement the projectors, right? We can approximately implement a project. And of course, first measure has some one over poly error, which may fail our analysis. So our final tweak is that we use a random threshold in gamma. So it means that we pick lots of threshold, like one, uh, like T different thresholds, and then we pick gamma from there randomly. Then with that technique, uh, we can, uh, we can, uh, yeah, we can bypass the error. 
Okay, now it's time for summary. So we give a CVQC protocol with an efficient verifier which runtimes polylog in M. And uh, this is by a parallel repetition of the high depth protocol with navigable suddenness error. And we have a two run CVQC protocol in the quantum render oracle model. And finally, we have a two run CVQC protocol with polylog and verifier in the common reference stream and the uh, quantum render oracle model. So, and then uh, we achieve the efficient verifier by using of length sequentially. Okay, and there are some open questions. First, our CBQC protocol uh, is based on lots of assumptions. In addition to LWE, we also need uh, the random quantum random oracle model and the common reference stream model. So, can we make the assumptions weaker? And second, uh, actually by Tron et al. They have a protocol for verification for quantum sampling problem. And actually their protocol, I think is not efficient. So can we make the protocol efficient? It's another interesting problem. Also, can we improve the efficiency of our protocol? Yeah, and thank you for listening.